All right, everyone. How was your weeks? We we haven't met in two weeks because of Thanksgiving. How how things go? How's things been going? You don't want to know. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> Keeping busy. I do we. Is that what we? Yeah, do? yeah. Oh, just okay. tell something good happening. Um, yeah, I have uh, my Brook Street multi going on deposit today. Oh, good. I have a new listing in Webster going on the market. A nice ranch for two forty nine nine for the next day or so. I have a big colonial um, in Dudley coming on the market for six ninety nine with an in ground pool. It's about four thousand square feet. Nice. Um, San Sandy's a prime case of why you just keep focusing on the positive and right. outweighing the negative because she's dealing with some of her former broker's uh, negativity and issues still, but she's fighting through it every day and uh -huh. continuing to push forward with the positive stuff. Sometimes, I, I mean, I had a terrible day yesterday and, and also, and just no, nothing was going right. So sometimes you just have to keep fighting through Sorry, it. What, not yesterday was not yeah. happy. So in case yeah. You no. <laughs> yeah, yesterday was not a happy day, but you just do what you have to do to try to push through it. And mm -hmm. it at the end of the day, I, I just, all day I kept, A, I fought the urge to just say this day is terrible. I'm going to go get McDonald's and I'm not going to work out today. <laughs> <laughs> so after all that was going on, I could have easily just gone that far and just gone, but I didn't. I decided mm -hmm. to eat well and work out and try to make that a positive, even though business wise, it was just a, not a great day. And some, you're going to have those days. Sometimes you're going to have those weeks. Sometimes you're going to have those months. You just got to keep fighting and keep, uh, working on the positives and so that they outweigh the negatives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can do that every day and it, it, if something bad happens in the morning, try to make something good happen in the afternoon. That's, that's how you, you know, can try to win the day. But how about you, Kim? Good stuff. Um, so I have a new listing coming on the market finally. That's good. Tomorrow and Warren and a couple of negative things. Just well, um, it's, one ninety nine nine from the Warren Mass three bedroom ranch. So hopefully it'll move because nice. there's not a lot. You've got a closing this week, right? Uh -oh. oh yeah, I have closing this week and two next week. So nice. Sweet. About that. Oh, that oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's right. I've got three closings. I've been working on that one for so long. It's been since like February of last year because the new build. So it's finally <coughs> closing. I just keep nice. getting. I had a closing get moved up. And I might have another one this week if we can get a close this week. Find out today. So, so things are good. Just a little bit That's slow good. with the new clients, but they're getting there. Yeah, so, it, this is the time of year where it's again, hard yeah. to um, keep clients motivated and be ready to pull the trigger. But yep. you're a lot of what you're doing now is you're setting up your January and February closing, so you got to keep the pressure up. But. Um, I had a conversation at Thanksgiving. I went to my niece's and her new fiance. I just met him for the first time. We're sitting at dinner and he was talking to his dad across the table and I heard him say, well, yeah, I do. I have some things I have to renovate first. And so my ears perked up and I looked at Jess and I said, is he selling a house? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, he's selling a house. She's like, yeah, so we're moving together. And I'm like, so you're thinking about selling a house, Jess? <laughs> she was like, oh my God, so Nadine works in real estate. <laughs> so I was like, oh my God, but I talked to her. So it turns out his house is actually in Rhode Island. Um, but hopefully Tracy will get licensed in Rhode Island. Because it's going to be, I guess, a few months anyways before he can do this because he's got stuff to do. But that'll be a nice referral fee. And well, Jill may have her license too. Oh, yeah. I'm working at them. Yeah, she's working at them. Oh, cool. mm -hmm. Rhode Island. It is. It's just a little bit harder to get. You got to get Corey checks from Mass in Rhode mm -hmm. Island. You got to get a letter of good standing. You got to uh, go to the uh, state and get an affidavit yeah. of. It's just. How about New Hampshire? New Hampshire is also not as easy as Connecticut. You got to take a state test. Oh, you do. And yeah. you oh, have to. <laughs> you have to get a letter of good standing, it's and it buyers. just. It's just never a quick they process. Go to New Hampshire now. You no, know, it's just. Mm -hmm. it, it takes a month or two. You know. Yeah once you start the process, but hopefully quicker, but. <laughs> well, and then the other good is that hopefully this week I should have my very first revenue share chat. So I'm very excited about that. So, mm. so yay. Yeah. <laughs> Recruit <Recruit> people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> How are you, John? 
No, yesterday was a good day because I, I picked up like two buyers. Two of them I picked up today. How'd you pick them up? Um, they came through as seeds on like the five sheet or Oh, nice. Just pick up the and phone and the call them. One actually came from Op City. Huh? Did you just pick up the phone and call them? And yeah, yeah. So wow, that works. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I'm I, I'm trying to get better at it, trying to call us like immediately. Yeah, and that's what I did with those, and, and obviously it worked. Right. And uh, and then I I actually had a seller lead come through last night off the post that I did on Facebook. I called them right away. I got pissed off. I called them right away. Oh, <laughs> it told me why you guys called. I was like, oh, all right. Well, you have a good night. We'll talk again, and I'll send you some stuff in the mail. <laughs> and then I'll knock at your door. But anyway, so that so I'm pretty pumped about that. But uh, oh, and and I fired a client. I broke. Yeah, good. Because it was it was just. I, I spent a lot of work with him. He was an investor. I helped him buy a house in Webster, and then he s spent more money than I think he was supposed to. And then we were trying to figure out ways where I could still help him list it. And he was like, "No, I'm gonna list it by myself." I come to find out, he was some other agent. So I told him, "I'm not doing business like that," because mm. he uh, he's gonna do more. But at the end of the day, I'm not I'm not gonna. Be wondering if someone's gonna use me or not. Right. I did that with a client that flipped <clears throat> two to three properties a year with me. He did it for two years straight, and then the third year, he, I spent months and months with him on a property, going back and forth and mm -hmm. talking about renovations. And then he listed with me, and then thirty days later, he wanted to cancel with me because somebody fed him another line of BS. And yep. so I said, "We're done." He's like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "We're done. We're done working together." I. I'm not gonna work together. So, yeah. well, the funny the funny thing is, is like I spent my father was doing it like court mm -hmm. so he would tell me that like some random people would come through the house and look at it, and I was like, okay. So I try to spend a little bit extra time, you know, meant like with the relationship wise, and it, obviously it just it wasn't where I thought it was, right? You know, and the funny thing is, is it's an entry only list, so I I told him. Whatever, but yeah, You'll move on. Move on. You got to work with people that want to work with you, and aren't going to stab you in the back right. when the first, <laughs> first opportunity comes up. But how about you, Joe? Um, last week was a little bit slower, like with leads, but I've been trying to like go through older leads, and you know, I noticed like a lot of people are continuing to still look at our website, property searches. Um, I'm still working with my husband's friend from work and his wife. Mm -hmm. They have like 100 and something views on properties. So they're actively looking like every day, even though they said they want to wait until spring. Yeah. So I'm hoping that changes. But yeah, okay. Right. Not the best week. It's okay. Just keep plugging away. How about you, Sean? Great. Great week? Really yeah. Huh? Good. offer last night to have more acceptance on it. Oh, nice. Um, rates and limits here. Cool. Uh, two buyers' contract signed, seller contract signed. I hold off on the listing though. Just hold off because he was interested in a house that um, it's going to need rental. We were talking with Mike about it. It's going to need about a month's worth of rental. So he's okay. going to wait to sell his so he can live there. So that's habitable. Oh, nice. Somebody's ran in and stole all the plumbing, all like the copper and wiring. <laughs> Hmm. Great spot on the job. But yesterday, everyone came out of the woodwork. All these people I've been working over the months. <clears throat> Two emailed me, said, Hey, I'm ready. Let's go. How about Thursday? We want to look at stuff. Everyone's, uh, everyone called, said, Same thing. Let's go. I'm ready now. All right. Everyone Let's go. After the well, it's, I always find it surprising this time of year. I think in our own minds, we think people just kind of slow it down for the holidays. It's not necessarily true. You know, if they're all of a sudden ready, and they get that pre-approval and a lot of them they're just gonna they're gonna go like they'll close in and around the holidays you yeah. know we're trying to do that closing in 35 days so yeah the like, cool. first one was 31 days this will be 35 days nice 
seller's able to do it quick too. So you got both sides you want to do it quick. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I always say when you're calling leads this time of year, just assume they want to do something this year and, or soon and not take a break during the holidays. And if they say, yeah, we're just going to take a break during the holidays, then they just become your follow-up pipeline. But if you treat it like they're not going to do anything, you're going to, you know, you're, you're going to take less of a, of a forward motion to try to convert them right now. And I think you got to just approach it like they're ready to go right now until they tell you otherwise. So how about you, Jeff? It was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, had that first meeting with that potential condo development. Yeah, that's happen. good. Jeff's so got a, a big condo kind of development opportunity he's going after right now. Where is that? It's going to be in uh, uh, Leicester. Okay. Um, just waiting here when the second meeting is. And I did send him that uh, the brochure that the you and Amy put together. Oh, good. Which was cool. I like that. I wrote three offers last week. We've got a, a new construction um, yes. brochure that we created. So if you have any opportunities for new construction, it's a great piece to start with, to give to builders. And um, we're gonna get some printed up so that we have them handy, but they tie in my construction experience with what you can bring to the table. So you can go after builders, whether you have a ton of experience or not. Um, so if you ever have an opportunity like that, let me know, we can get you some of those brochures to give to builders. Yeah, it was just a very preliminary meeting. Um, so I'll call him back today if I don't want to do the next meeting. It's a, it's a project. Yeah. Um, wrote three offers last week, two that accepted. Nice. And one of them got a home inspection today at three. Uh, picked up uh, two new buyers. And it's just kind of working out. Cool. Awesome. So that's about it. How about you, Dan? Yeah, slower. Slower? Yeah, yeah I mean, everyone has a lot of leads that were ghosting me. They were kind of like, stop calling me, stop, stop emailing. Oh, okay. What do you need? I guess you're weeding the garden. So then you need more leads then, right? Yeah. And yeah. then uh, oh, I got my headshots. So I really want to get uh, mailers and Christmas stuff out. And, okay. Uh, kind of more professional work. Okay. Yeah, just keep trying to get leads. Cool. Karen? I, ha I just put my condo in for Amy Hunter. Um, Accepted offer yesterday. Okay. I have a bunch of buyers I'm working with, and a lot of people on the um, sink that are in there, like every, you know, a lot. So I'm just keeping in touch with them. Okay. I'm trying to get listings. Right. Oh, and I do have, I just got a text. I should have an offer coming in on the listing offer. Okay. Are any of you guys, uh, who's doing uh, seller lead ads on Facebook? Any of you guys? Yeah. Just paid for What's that? Yeah, those paid yeah. for? Yeah, they're paid boosts, but you're basically driving people to your home value website. Oh, oh yeah, I got that. I, mean, yeah. I do them all. Put them on your business. And you get, you're getting them leads from them, right? I mean, I've been, I've, been test, I call I've been testing ads for a while. It's been working out. I mean, so I usually put, like, the one that I did, I put, like, uh, and I'll put like a link to like how we're sticking on your home value. Right? So like they can you put it to your website. Link, but I put my website link yeah. in the wording above. Like if you want to know about home value, you click here. Mm -hmm. So those people, like they're obviously reading the article. But they're clicking on the link in the article to go to the home value. So I, I, mean, I feel like if they're going to click on that, they're more, a little bit more serious. Right. Because they're not just clicking on. Right. You know, only the ads there. Right? It's on your business page, right? Yeah. That. How many of you would be interested in um, next week, probably after this session, doing a, a, a ad advertising workshop? Yeah. Yeah. Just to, yeah, all of you? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Let's have an advertising workshop and I'll just be walking around and helping you guys uh, do ads. So, whatever you want to do for ads, we'll spend a couple hours just getting some ads out there for you guys to get you guys used to how to how to do ads how to demographically target the right groups and get the most value out of the ads that you're running uh, i think that the home value ads are probably the best way to get seller leads right now because otherwise i mean obviously your network you're working your network for listings always but to go out there to the world and say beyond my network how do i get listing opportunities um, I think the home value ads are probably the best way to go. It's not an overnight game. You know, it's going to cost you probably five to ten dollars per lead. But you have no matter every lead that registers, you have a an address for. 
So having an address is key, you know, for people that are super aggressive, like Jeff, you can go door knock those doors, at least mail a, a handwritten note to them and a, um, you know, business card and a market, you know, you could do a simple market analysis uh, or just continuing to call them, put them on drip campaigns. They're, I mean, we're running into people that are definitely selling, you know, uh, Nadine's been helping me experiment with this so I can, you know, bring it to you guys, but it's, we're, we're getting opportunities. It's, you know, people are probably typically more further out, like three to six months when they're registering for a home value lead, but there, there are definite players out there. We've run into a couple of, one of them was a canceled listing. Another one was a no show. I showed up and the guy didn't show up. At his um, house. You went to yeah. the guy's house and the guy wasn't there on his day off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there are some definite opportunities in there. Uh, there's another one I've been talking to that's a definite opportunity. So there's some clear opportunities with those. It's there's just some good ones, but then like, I, so like last night I got one that had a bunch of pieces of trash. Literally, he got, I have his number and then in the, in the notes, it's got his address, how many times last year, each day, but each his name would be uh, Harper's Road Quest, just curious, and no, not that right like now. And then it gives you like the valuation price of the number. Right. But I got another one that looks like an hour ago, and it just said, one of the what could happen? Yeah, so they didn't put in the full address, but you know, did they put their name in? No, so, yeah, I mean, they're going to be hit or miss. You're not going to, it's not going to be any different than the other lead generation day, but if it costs you five to ten dollars per lead, it's still going to cost you five hundred to seven hundred dollars to find a buyer, a seller in there. But you know, if you find a it's listing, for, if you find a listing for five to seven hundred bucks, it's I'd take it all day long. I don't know about you guys, <laughs> you know, if someone said, Give me five hundred bucks, I'll give you a listing, <laughs> I'd take it. The problem is we just, we, we would like to see it be instantaneous gratification. It's just not, <laughs> none of this lead game is ever going to be instant gratification, but. If we're going to do a marketing, we should all take, I took the mind training webinar. Yes. That, just yeah, I'm paying for Remind right now. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm using a free one. Yeah. Holy moly, it's scary what you can find out about people. This is a free. Yeah. So what uh, what we'll do in that class, and and for those of you who won't have access to it yet, we can take wherever you want to run your ads and develop a, a list in Remind that'll allow you to target your ads even better than Facebook allow you to do. So Facebook only allows you to do basically things like age. Um, you can do if they have kids. Um, you know, what likes and interests they have, but you can't get down to whether they own a house anymore or not or things like that. But if you take uh, Remind, which is basically a, a, it takes a bunch of different data and it rolls it into a system where you could say, I want to search in Auburn for homes that have been owned for more than five to 10, five to 12 years that have more than uh, $50,000 in equity and they're not just taking like assessed value. They're doing it like a tri merge of several different valuation sources and figuring out an average. So it's a fairly decent, it's probably, you know, maybe even better than Zillow estimates as far as I'm concerned from what they told me. And then it takes their mortgage value and um, what their mortgage would be if they took out a mortgage 10 years ago, what the, what the actual mortgage left would be if they pay their mortgage for 10 years they'll take those two numbers and minus it out and the algorithm figures out how much equity they have in their house. So you could say, I want to, I want to mail, I want to do both mailing and or Facebook ads to uh, this group of people that have owned a house for a certain number of years that have kids between, you know, certain age group that are, um, have equity in their home that haven't taken out a mortgage in the last three years, all this stuff, and then create a list from Remind and then download it and upload it as a customer file list in a Facebook ad and target to people that you already know own a home. So you're even more targeted than what you're probably doing right now, John, with the, with the uh, Facebook ads. It's still producing, but I, if you can get even more specific with that targeted list, then it's even better. And the, funny, the, the thing I didn't even realize with Facebook is I thought you needed a database with email addresses to to put an ad in front of a database. You don't, you need a, all you need is a name and their, where they live and you know, the town. So name, town, state, 
because unless you're using some nickname on your Facebook account, then Facebook is going to match the name and they're going to match the town that you said you lived in when you created your Facebook account or updated your Facebook account. So they can target that database that we add into Facebook with 80 to 90% accuracy, Remind said. So you can target that person out of Remind on Facebook? Yes. You pull it out of Remind and upload it into Facebook. Uh, when, it's, when, when you're creating your demographics, there's a box that says create custom audience. When you click on create custom audience, it allows you to upload a file and you can upload a database. And we'll go through that in the, in the market, in the workshop, advertising workshop, but basically. Yeah, it, it's crazy. You can even do notices of default. So you could download a list of people who are in hot water with their house that are, that you want to put your advertising in front of and mailers. So if someone's getting behind on their mortgage and they have equity in their home, you can put mailers and Facebook ads in front of those people. So it's a huge tool for, for agents. It's, I think it's like one, I think I'm paying 149 a month for it. It's not cheap, but, and I'll give you guys access to it if you want to use it. There's a free version. It's just not as powerful as the, what more do you get with your um, I think it adds in the notices of default it adds in, um, I forget. Uh, I forget, I'd have to look at it again, property but value, yeah, property value, home equity, the ones that you probably can't it's kind of see in gray at the bottom, but can't you can click on. Those when we get into the, you can dig a little bit and get them, you just can't filter by it. Out right. Numbers. When you pay it, you can filter for yeah. those. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyways, that's um, something we'll, we'll work on. Cause I, I think the more ads you're, you're placing and the more leads you're going to get. And I don't, I, I think that's where you should be. If you're spending money anywhere, that's where you should be spending your money is on Facebook and Google. We'll do some, we'll do a Google advertising class as well. Cause I've started uh, some Google advertising again, just to kind of experiment with that, but you could do home value ads with that too. You can't use the remind database to upload a database and target on Google, but you can do the, if someone types in get my home value or home valuation, you can show up on Google. Um, or, you know, things like, <clears throat> you know, there was, um, like with um, uh, Sandy's got the, the project, uh, New England Commons down in Webster, and the builder had a concern because the, the Century 21 uh, website for that project, which is terrible in itself, but it was showing up higher on Google because it's been around longer. And I said, I can fix that. <laughs> <laughs> and we ran, I ran a Google ad that basically type, for anybody that types in New England Commons, uh, any commons, New England Commons Webster, I picked like five or six keywords that would be most common for someone that's typing it in. And I know that most people aren't gonna type it in, it's just gonna be the builder wanting to make sure that his project is being represented well. And I ran an ad so that it's always number one, no matter what someone does organically. And I obviously add on to it, New England Commons, the official, site <laughs> so it's you know it's not costing basically anything i think it, it's i i think the builder probably clicked on it because it it spent a buck since well, i started running the ad it, it wasn't really him it was tools oh okay that called them to tell them oh okay so then they page. looked but someone clicked right. on it it might have been jules yeah. <laughs> but somebody clicked on it after i spent i said i mm -hmm. i did it but you know, kind of, sometimes with those things with Google, you're not ads. You're not spending money unless they click. And if you're using keywords that aren't just typically clicked, it's not like you're going to be spending a lot of money. It's just to make sure. Like for instance, if you Google your name and you don't like that, you know, your website's not showing up number one, or someone has a similar name to you, I can show you how to run a Google ad so that if somebody types in your name, your your ad is always number one. And not many people are going to click on it. I started doing that with Lux Group. Um, as well, because there was a Lux group in California. I want to make sure that we were always showing up number one. So I'm running an ad for that. And surprisingly, there's been like maybe 20 clicks on it in the last week. So clearly there's someone drives, is driving. People jewels. are, that could have been all just, <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I'm in my own head, I'm theorizing that, you know, people drive by something. They say, oh, it's, it's a Lux group listing. Mm -hmm. Let me Google Lux group. 
because I can't find it or, or, or who knows, it might be agents looking into careers. I don't know what it is, but somebody is typing those keywords in and clicking on those ads. Um, Sign is my, oh yeah so, so they must have just googled it or something like that yeah it's a big sign in front of my mother's house and that sign right is, I think it's the right so the point it's is well i mean i'll we'll work we'll show you guys how to do that so you can make sure that what whether it's your your name or your website if you want to show up in certain ways and i can also show you how to demographically target certain uh things with Google like if you want to focus on lakefront property in Webster, for instance, we can create a set of keywords that if somebody types it in, you you show up at the top of the Google list. But all right. Um, I was interested in this uh, training webinar uh, Thursday at 10 30 in the morning. I took it last week. It was only an hour and fantastic. Yeah, that, that's worth watching. What is yeah. that one? It's Remind. Oh, okay. So you have the, can you? Post that or forward that to Nadine or something. Um, but. It's just through MLS, right? Yeah. Just, yeah. You just sign up through MLS. Yeah. It's online. Uh, okay. So let's move on. Um, looking at the board, anything you need to want to note? Highlights, hey, Nadine, on what the status was? Um, I think that there's obviously still a big mess with the projected gross income. I, I want to make sure like everybody understands like. For me personally, if you don't fill the sheet out, it doesn't affect me at all. Like this is for you guys, so it doesn't affect me at all either. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, the sheet I, itself, we, it doesn't doesn't make a difference to us. We're doing this so that you guys can start tracking your business. So if you're not filling in all your spots, then you don't really have a way to track to see if what you're doing is working or not. So Jill and Kim both consistently. Every week, fill in every single column. Sean does every column except the gross income every week. Um, I saw it. got it. Yeah. So, month. and then yeah, and then you know, so and then everyone else kind of does a variety. Some people do it every week. Some people skip weeks here or there. You know, it's not. It's it doesn't matter to us, but it matters to you if you guys really want to invest in your business and grow your business, so that you can look at it and from week to week. Say, oh yeah, look at I my you know my income is growing every week because my phone calls are growing every week, or because I you know I've got more listing appointments or showing appointments. So it's not just a tool because we feel like having to fill out a form. I mean, I I, I could care less for myself, but it's for you and, and it's gonna help you grow. So I think that like going into the new year, that should be one of your key goals is to make sure that you're really taking advantage of this and looking at it every day and, and analyzing it, not just filling in a number because we're asking you to, mm. but really looking at it and saying, where are my opportunities and what's working for me so that you can build on what's working and then fix the opportunities. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, it, it does, if you are receiving leads from the office, it does worry me if you're not using your pipelines every day too, because I don't know anybody in here that's rain man and can be like, I got to call this person in their own head. <laughs> I, I, I've got these 10 people to call today. I need to call this person, then this person, then this person. You can't keep track of it all in your head. You cannot keep track of the amount of leads coming in, the conversations you've had, the, the not forgetting some important factor about some lead that you needed to do with follow-up. There's just no way to keep track of it all unless you're using a tracking system. So I mean, I'm looking at mine every day too, because I, it's just, it's a reminder. And every day I look at it, and as long as I keep putting the people in there that are turning from leads to prospects, and, and it's not meant for every lead that comes in. It's meant for the ones that you've had good conversations with. So you all of a sudden, John, you had three new good conversations yesterday. Those go into somewhere in your, in your pipeline, whether it's prospective or you think they're active already i would say they're not active yet because you haven't gone out and taken them home to see homes but they're going to perspective so that 
five days from now, when you look at it, you're like, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta keep driving this client. Oh yeah, I forgot about this guy. Every time I look at it, if I do miss a day or two, and there's days I do miss looking at it, I always remember something I didn't do yesterday. I'm like, crap, I forgot to do that yesterday. And sometimes I'll just use it in the morning to take a sticky pad and say, these are the five people I gotta follow up with today. Just to make sure I'm continually driving my business because it, in the game of leads and the game of you know growing a big business, you're talking to a lot of people. You know, my I would probably guess if you're closing 30 deals a year, you're probably you're probably talking to 500 people in that year, maybe more. You know, to get those 20 to 30 closings out of 500 people that say that you know, it might raise their hand a little bit and say, yeah, I'm interested, but I'm, so it's a massive amount of people you got to be keeping contact with all the time. And, and you can't necessarily predict every single person that's going to come out of it and actually do something. And it's going to come out of it, do something and actually work with you. You know, those are the two key factors is there's going to be a small percentage that actually go and do something in the next year. And then there's going to be and even smaller percentage that come and actually work with you. So your keys are to make sure that you stay on top of them until they buy or die. You know, and that's the, um, that's the reality. So it's, it's hard to keep track of them unless you're, you're using a tracking system. And, um, you know, you'll personally know if, if you've missed something recently, ask yourself if I had it on my, on my pipeline and I was looking at my pipeline every day, would I have missed that? The answer is probably no, but, uh, you gotta, you gotta start looking at this as this is my tool. I'm not just doing it for the office. I'm not just doing it for Tracy or Nadine or anybody. This is, this is mine. I own it. This is what I, I know I need to use this to be where I need to be in the next year. So, all right, that's all I want to talk about. That who's who worked on their uh, marketing plans? Anybody? What did you find in that exercise? What what does one of your marketing areas want to be? I, I need to, I kind of want to, I've been thinking about like marketing myself with my background mm -hmm. to make myself stand out a little bit more from other um, agents, you know, um, my experience with design and um, just like staging and stuff like that, you know, yeah. trying to, I'm thinking about that and trying to like develop that for next year. Okay. You know. Um, you know, definitely more ads and kind of take that to the next level. You know, what is your background? Um, I have an interior design degree and I worked in um, the school and kitchen industry for um, 15 years. So I've been kitchen designing for a little while. So I just feel I'm trying to, Tara actually kind of pointed it out. She's like, you should really go in that direction, you know, and Market yourself in that way. Stand out. How do you find people that uh, kitchens are important to them? Um, no, I mean I don't think that's where I would go with that. I think if anything, it's. Um, I'm thinking like sell sellers a lot, you know, staging before selling and stuff like that. Property, you know, taking it to the next level when buyers are looking at mm -hmm. properties, you know, no clutter. Mm -hmm. and Use that, say that in some way. If anything, I think you, sh you the biggest impact I would have on you is building your own confidence to be able to, you know, say to yourself, like, um, Cape, I've got all this. I've got this background in design. Like I can help you make sure you you get your house well prepared for sale. Right. You know, I think that's where the most benefit would come from. That you could, you know, with buyers that are, uh, if you wanted to focus on a buyer type of buyer that was looking at kind of low to mid level homes, but wanted an awesome looking home with an awesome looking kitchen, you could focus on the, the renovation, you know, the res renovation loans. It's, you know, if you're you know, tired of looking at average homes and want to, you know, want to live in your dream home, you know, the, the, 
the um, you know you may you can get there with a renovation loan, something like that. Right. But yeah, like yeah. even with my own house, you know, a lot of people couldn't see potential. Like right, helping people realize what they can do. Right, you know, a lot of people can't see past that. Right, so I would keep thinking along those lines and think about how 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 you could reach the kind of buyers that are looking for that and if it if it makes sense or not yeah but anybody else work on their marketing plans or what they're going to focus on i think it makes sense for me to try to tap into the the um, colleges in the area the rentals i know mm -hmm. colleges like northeastern after their freshman year they kick them out they just they, 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 they can go off campus yeah so that's something i really need to educate myself and learn how to get get in there i mean i know it's rentals it's not, but you can get no, it. but they're $2,000 rentals a ton of them. and the tenants pay for it out there. And kids are kind of lazy. So that's just right. like, oh, I talked to this Mommy guy. and daddy gave me $3,000 to rent an apartment. So <laughs> yeah, this guy went on and had a beer with me after. So he's cool. We'll talk to him. So yeah, now it, it can be good quick money. A lot of, there's a lot of agents down there that do yeah, both. It's like a, uh, just like an info session. At like work. Like, I, do, I don't know if I can just walk into like a campus center and just hang flyers and stuff or. Uh, yeah, we'll t we can talk about that offline. You can probably target them online too, you know, because they're going to be on Facebook, and you can target age range, and we can put ads out there that are, you know, you know, get access to the best rentals in Boston. And, and then the demand that whole season starts like Craigslist and Facebook for September. Yeah, so Craigslist cool. would be a good resource for that. Um, and and probably just the uh, condo market people buying their first house after that, you know, they're renting for $3,000 a month and they instead buy a condo for three to 400,000. Yeah. So with low money down. So that's another, another area we can talk about. I'm happy to talk with any of you guys offline individually one-on-one -on -one about, you know, what you think your market focuses want to be. Um, we'll talk about a little bit more as we go through the business plan today on how those marketing plans fit into your business plan. Um, but anybody else have, Anything else as far as the marketing plans they want to talk about? Yeah, I, I didn't fill up that sheet I lost. I'm thinking more and more. <clears throat> the people I meet keep telling me they've never met a realtor like me because I'm digging around in the attics and digging out the septic systems, mm -hmm. showing them how the house is built. And we, four of, the, of my buyers, they're, they're, it's usually the one says buy this, buy this, buy this, and I'm telling people don't buy this. This house is junk, and we walk mm -hmm. away and go look at another one. And I said they've, they've never had anybody um, do that with them before. So I really want to um, market myself as somebody who's built houses in the past, knows the ins and outs of a good house versus a bad house, and not just be a salesman. Right. I don't want to be. I don't want to be just a salesman. I want to help these people find a good house, a good sturdy, solid house. And that's definitely an avenue I want to do. Okay. I, I think it's a great avenue. Yeah. You know, and, and that, that could be something you put into words that you use as like an initial email to buyers, like, hey, I'm this is why I'd love to work with you, and this is why I think you should give me the opportunity to prove to you the difference between a normal agent and what I do. So it might be something you wanna express more openly. Yeah when you're first talking to buyers. Cause at the end of the day, a lot of times the agents are, there's more than just you as an agent that's calling people, you know, especially like the five street leads. And like, what, what diff, what makes you different? Why should they just, the fact that they just accidentally picked up your phone call <laughs> when there's five other agents calling them, what makes you different? Why should they choose you over someone else? What is your, what is your quick, they always just say, um, what is your, what, what's your quick elevator speech? In one minute, tell me why. Why should I work with you? You know, and if you should have that prepared, um, you know, from a recruiting perspective, they always, uh, my recruiting coaches always used to tell me that, like, give me your one, one minute pitch. Why? It used to be why exit. Now it's why Lux. <laughs> but, um, you know, you got to have that ready because a lot of times you don't have more than a minute. You don't have much time to, to say why you're different. Um, so keep that in mind too, is a lot, some of this marketing stuff that you're, these marketing uh, niches or these marketing focus areas you are creating, you, you have to express your why, you know, why are you focusing in Dudley? You know, why, 
what message are you going to give people that to tell them you're, you're looking to do business in Dudley, you're selling your home in Dudley, you're buying in Dudley. Why should I use you? I know this is why you're, you're advertising to me because you want to capture me as being the air, the Dudley expert, but what makes you the Dudley expert? Why should I use you? You know, they want that validation. So give that some thought while you're coming up with your, your marketing plans for your, areas of focus i know i definitely have to like, like maybe get a good better seller pitch to them all as usual or contact someone like that guy that I do with the when he was like when he was like what the, why are you calling me this late like i got i like it, it screwed me all up you know what i mean i felt that, like that hot it was like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess it depends. I mean, I probably wouldn't have had anything to say in that time period either because it's not like he was requesting information on a property, yeah. <laughs> like a five street lead. So, <laughs> personally, I'd probably not call a sour lead at nine o'clock at night. Well, then I, then I thought about it. And right after, yeah. Like, I mean, it's good that you're like, boom, I got a call. I got a new lead. I got a call. But you also have to think about, are they, is getting a home evaluation in an urgent situation? Yeah. Probably not. So um, I don't know what a good comeback would be for calling a seller that wanted their home value at nine o'clock at night. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're like, oh, I'm just, I, I'm addicted to real estate. I love helping people. I mean, something like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love my job so much. I lost all track of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so. I mean, that would have been a good thing. Tara could have done that. Right. You know, sweet little voice. Yeah. Right. I mean, what are some quick taglines? Of, what are some quick taglines you guys would use for why? If you had to tell somebody quickly, why, why me? Or why you? You know, why should I use you, John? <laughs> <laughs> <I'll answer. laughs> bring, bring. Oh, I'm not prepared. For that. All um, right. Well, what I've been saying was, I used to build houses. I got sick of doing that. And now I'm, I'm selling them. That's a good one. It's working. A one that's, you know, always worked for me is either I'm a numbers guy. I know numbers. Like that's always been my thing. If you want somebody that knows values, I'm your guy. Or nobody's gonna work harder than me. You know, that's a good quick one that agents will use. Um, you know, just you got to have those things. I mean, I, I usually I usually say that you know this is like I usually say that it's my only career. This is all that I do. So you know, that's a good one too. You know, if I'm not if I'm not helping you either sell your house or buy a house that you want, technically I'm not doing my things. But, all right, that's a good one. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I, love it. I do. Uh, mm -hmm. I this. It's great. It's the best decision I ever made. It's it really just sitting me at a desk. It really doesn't feel like work to me. All right. <laughs> All right. This kind of segues into a short discussion I wanted to have on success. What does success mean to you guys? Being happy. What what makes you happy? Money. <laughs> Not having to worry. Closing. That's where you want to be. Yeah. I mean, yeah, money at the end of the day, but happiness. You know, peace of mind. Uh, wake up every day and do something that I love to do, as opposed to get up and have to go sit in some office that I don't want to be in. Mm -hmm. Some hard ass manager trying to make more calls. I already made them. Right. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> okay. I drove to Shirley last night to get that, get that offer signed, and that porn <laughs> rain right at 6 30. I was smiling the whole way up there. This is my choice. I, I wanted to do this, you know. This, I'm not having to wake up at 5.15 and go sludge up in the ice and the rain and be miserable outside. It's, no, I want to, I, I don't know, I'm kind of old-fashioned. What does, uh, what else, what else yeah, does no. success mean to you guys? <laughs> I hear money a lot. What On your deathbed, is the money going to matter? Making other people happy. All right, uh, that's one I wanted to hear. What? How many of you really do feel a level of accomplishment when you are are helping people? Yeah. You know, and 
and building a relationship with people. Mm -hmm. How many of you have customers that you just, I mean, I know Kim, you have a couple, uh, you just can't stand, you wait, can't wait for the deal to be over. <laughs> and what's the difference of feelings over working with someone like that versus working with someone you feel like you could be friends with forever? And then they ask you to come to their house all the time and you don't right. have any time to go. <laughs> right, but that's, 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 nice, but that's hard. a level of success that you could never get with money. Mm -hmm. So do I think it's all in one, no, one answer? No, I think success is, is there's levels of success in, in, in different areas we have to have. We could have all the money in the world, but if we have no friends then are we, or family, are we really successful? No. So we have to have quality of relationships. We have to have money. You know, this world works on money. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's, you can't have one without the other. You can't have... Um, success in business but not a lack of success at home you can't have success in business and a lack of, uh, of you know whatever makes you happy spiritually whether it's you know watching Netflix or taking time off to spend with family friends or whatever it may be so you have to start thinking about success as as multi-tiered but you, if you start to hear a lot of stuff like audiobooks and stuff like that I've been listening to Grant Cardone's 10x I don't know if you guys have ever listen to that. He's a pretty motivating guy, but he talks about success a lot as, as it relates to money. And certainly I, I think that money does matter, but it's not all about the money you have to have. Uh, if you can mix the two, if you could mix being a successful real estate agent with working with great people you can build relationships with and be friends with forever, that's an awesome mix to me. That's, that's where a rewarding career comes in and uh, and i think it's you know not working with all buyers you got to have some listings you got to have some listings to balance it out so that you're not working you know running around the state with buyers and never having any downtime to be able to st spend with your family and, and friends you gotta you gotta start thinking about your business and how can i build it so that it's it's well balanced so that it supports every area of my life you know that's key is you know if you want to work like a dog and make a lot of money in this business you can't but you can also end up, you know, without friends and without family, <laughs> you know? So you got to start thinking about it all. Uh, and in Grant Car Cardone's, if you're driving around, I recommend you get it on audio audible. It's worth listening to. I listen to it occasionally when I'm driving around. But uh, one of the things he says is that you have to start thinking about success as it's your duty, your responsibility, and your obligation to your family to be successful. You know, you have obligations in your life. You have obligations to your kids, your family, to your friends, to yourself, you know, you have to start thinking about the fact that, you know, a certain level of success is, it's critical. It's critical for you to take that responsibility is, you know, not blaming on anybody else, but it's all, it all falls on yourself at the end of the day. And it's your duty and your responsibility to those that are in your life to, to make yourself successful. So when you're, you're putting yourself out there in an uncomfortable way, whether it's phone calls or anything else, just think about that fact that I've got a duty to do this. There's no other way. You know, there is no easy road. There's no sure fix. There's no quick fix. Um, how many, how many people have won the lottery and ended up miserable or squandering it all away? You know, money's not going to just solve it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's more than that. So you got to start thinking about, uh, success from from inside from it, what what it means in your own head and building your business plan around that and I wanted to have a short conversation about it because it's important when you start building your business plan and this business plan is um, from the workman success series and Nadine it, um, do you know which session this is the first session of BAM right I think it's the for those of you if you could send out the, the link again to that the uh, login for that yeah um, I believe it's the first section of BAM is the business planning session. I recommend, I'm, we're not going to watch it here and waste the time to watch it here, but I recommend you go through that and watch it and watch how he talks about how to build this, this business plan. But I've given you guys all copies of it so you can start to work on this. You've got to watch the video to, uh, to work through the SWOT analysis, with, which is kind of an analysis of what your strengths are, what your, where the opportunities are for you, and what your weaknesses are so that you can you know, really focus in the right areas. So don't, I don't really want to talk about this uh, in this session, but 
some of the, the parts in here that I do want to talk about are beyond the SWOT analysis. Um, is what your business objectives are. What are your what are your long term goals, mid term goals, and short term goals for your business? You got to have uh, those in writing. You got to you got to know what you're what you're going after. There's no way to know what you're gonna where you're gonna uh, get to without without having a goal in mind. Um, also, you have to start looking at your personal objectives. What do you want to do personally? You know, what are your what are your objectives objectives in the coming year for yourself, uh, for your family? You know, personal could be um, dropping some weight or getting in shape. Personal could be you know reading more, watching less TV. Um, family could be making sure you book uh, if you are working with buyers on the weekends that at least one month, one week in a month, you're completely off. Or every some agents I've known have treated it like every Sunday. I don't go out on Sunday. Sunday is my day of rest. You know, whatever it may be. What are you, what are your objectives from a family perspective? Spiritual. What are your spiritual objectives? And that could be faith, or it could be mindset. Um, I don't necessarily think it has to be faith. I don't think, it, or it could be both. It could be one or the other. But you have to uh, think about what am I going to do from a mindset perspective to make sure my head's on right and. I don't think you can do that without, you know, reading certain materials or watching certain uh, seminars or trainers or stuff that you see on Facebook, uh, you know, making sure you're filling your head with good stuff. Social perspective, what are you going to do to, what are your objectives to in the coming year for, you know, being more social with your friends and with your family and making sure you're not taking for granted those good people that you have in your life. So you want to start to write those things down. Uh, and then we start talking about your uh, goal achievements. Uh, there's four areas uh, of, of goal achievements. Um, and they could be, you know, personal, they could be family, they could be business, but you got to put down uh, what your goal is and why you want it. The why is the most important thing. You know, if you want to do 30 deals because it's going to result in a, a net of 100,000 to you in the next year, why? What is that going to do for you? You know, is it, is it because you have a goal in mind of buying a car, new car, or buying a house and you've got to put down down payment money for it or whatever? Typically, your goal is anybody who sets a goal is. I, I would hope it's higher than your absolute bare minimum you need to pay your bills. You know, don't make a goal that's like, okay, well, I need five thousand dollars a month to survive, so my goal is six thousand a month. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so if you're making a goal that's obviously loftier than that, then what are you going to do with that money? What would that help you do? How would that bring more value to your life, being able to reach that goal? So you have to start thinking about your whys. What are your specific whys on what, what, why you want to accomplish that goal? And then you have to predetermine what your excuses for failure are going to be so that you can recognize them when you start telling yourself them before you, you basically let them take over and cut yourself off. So what would be some excuses? Uh, if you had a lofty goal, if you wanted to close 30 deals in the next year and, and net $120,000, what would be some excuses why you would tell yourself it's not going to happen? Not enough time, not enough money, not smart enough. I haven't been in the business long enough. Um, market sucks. Market's changing, interest rates are going up, don't have the right tools, my family's always bothering me, I got kids, they drive me nuts, my husband's just not working, he's driving me nuts. <laughs> uh, you know, there's going to be excuses that you can let, rattle off a list right now that you're not, you haven't even started on the path towards those goals, but you already know what they're going to be. 
you know, this is your, it's your brain telling you this is going to be tough. So why, why would you go after this? So pre, tell, uh, write down what your excuses are, are going to be. What are you going to do, do to resolve those excuses? You know, if your excuse is, I've got a busy life with my kids, how are you going to resolve that one? It's, it may be very true. You have a busy life with your kids, but how would you resolve to make sure that that doesn't stand away of your goals? Is it, watching less TV at night and spending it looking at my pipeline to make my list of calls for the next day? Is it watching TV and working on my computer to make sure, um, you know what I mean? Or is it, you know, setting more better boundaries, asking my spouse for more support? What are you going to do to resolve these items? Um, and then what your action items would be to uh, set forth towards those goals. So it's important to kind of, Put those down and those i would say you're going to have uh, a goal your business goal you're going to have a personal goal you're going to have a spiritual goal and uh what was the other category from the page before um i think it was was it what social social so make sure uh, fill those out for each of those four areas and uh, be ready to share for our next class now, um, the income goals. Your income goals, when you watch the BAM class, you're going to, um, here's the mistake I think a lot of people make with goals, is they try to make them too realistic, and when they shortfall them, they don't ever end up where they wanted to be in the first place. One of the, the ways I think you should be building your goals is, um, is go, for, go for the moon. Yeah, you know, go for the stars and land at the moon. You know, make sure you're you're shooting lofty, and if you fall short, you're still having a killer year. You know, you, you probably if you set your goals and you hit them, you probably set them too low. Let's set them high, and when you land somewhere short of that, you're killing it still. And if you listen to the BAM training on this uh, in the BAM class, he'll tell you there's. And we, we already talked about this in the marketing plan. You should have four uh, areas of focus in your business. One should always be your sphere of influence. The only time I would say you probably wouldn't have a sphere of influence is if you didn't, if you just moved here from California, you don't have any family or friends, and you just are literally starting from scratch. Otherwise, everybody has some kind of sphere of influence in this area. So one of them, number one, should be your sphere of influence. Um, and if your income goal is, let's say, uh, $10,000 per year, um, uh, $10,000 per month, not $10,000 per year, and it relates to uh, four, three closings per month or four closings per month, you want to build each of these four areas to reach 100% of your goal. You know, so if, you're, if your goal was to close 20 deals in the year, Build each of these as if each one was going to hit the 20. And the reason for that is one area may not work like you hope it does, but the other might kill it. One, you might scratch next year because it didn't really work for you. That's why when I talked about marketing plans, we wanted to have a few different areas. We wanted to maybe have a, a, a town or a, a farm area we want to focus in. We want to have our sphere of influence. We may want to you know, focus on seller ads on uh, Facebook. We want, might want to, uh, focus on, uh, you know, buyers, uh, first-time home buyers, because there's always a, a steady access of first-time home buyers in any market, no matter what the, was going on. So when you have four key areas and you're going after your complete goal in each one, unless you're dogging it and not really working on all four, then you're going to reach your, your goals no matter what. So we're going to build four, the four areas based on reaching your goal for, for each one. Four areas? Whatever you decide, one should always be your sphere of influence. Okay. Two, three, and four would be what are your other um, marketing niches you want to go after? You know, do you want to be famous in Auburn? Do you want to be the famous agent in Dudley? Do you want to be? Um, do you want to focus on on builders? Do you want to focus on sellers? The problem is there's so many different avenues we can go after unless we focus really focus on a few, we're just gonna be constantly skipping around saying, I wanna do this now or that now or this now or that now. So let's, let's figure out four key areas you wanna focus your business on. So 
you know, one of your legs, Jeff, is probably still going to be, um, you know, buyers through Op City and your mm -hmm. other lead gen sources. And that might be, hey, I want to close, um, I'm going to close 20 deals with buyers in the next year. I want to take 20 listings. I want to start a, uh, a, a back in my, a renewed energy towards my listing focus. So I'm going to shoot for, mm -hmm. I'm going for 20 listings next year, 20 listings sold, which might take 30 listings taken. And so you, you, you got to have four areas that you're working towards. One of them is definitely going to be probably the new construction, depending on how that pans out. Right. So if that pans out well, it's probably it's going to be take up 90% of my time. Right. 98% of my time. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got to be careful with that. The only reason being is if you put 90% of your time in it and they only build four a year, yeah, that's not going to be good for you. Right. No, <laughs> you yeah, know, there's, like, I mean, as Sandy knows, you know, you can't, you've got how many units and it's, how many uh, do they build a year? Six. Six. six yeah. <laughs> so it'd be, it'd be great if they would just, I mean, if yeah. they, if they went for it, they could probably sell 20 in the next year. Everything would be so crazy. But some builders are only going to go after at a certain pace and a certain speed. And, yeah. No, mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah. I, and you can't put all your eggs in that basket either. They're looking to do 50 to 50 to 70. I, I, I haven't put them yet. Not, 50 not to 70 not, units not total. total. How did you get that? Total, yeah. How did you get the time? Yeah, Which is... The building that built the right Yeah, but you also have to look at the absorption rate. If, if, if... I don't know if you could sell that many condos in a it's year. It's a very beginning stage, so I'm just kind yeah. of taking it. Yeah. You know, we're going to sell right now, but... Yeah. And be careful. You know what happened in May. Yeah, you definitely got to be careful with builders. It's a, it's They're a. Not trustworthy. I hate to say that, are. but some are. Yeah. Yeah. So the big thing is you, you gotta, uh, you gotta figure out your 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 areas, your goals, and you just have to watch the video before you um, get too far into you know, writing out the business plan yourself because the video will help a lot. That's on BAM and it'll, t it'll really tell you get through like how you should be building this business plan. But the really, the, the focus has to be on picking like four key areas where your business is going to come from. You know, if it's, you seem to have, your buyer business seems to be well in line, right? It seems to be pretty good, yeah. Yeah, it's producing. Oh, right. I said last year. Last year was a lot of listings. Well, that meant it was like eight twenty. Do you like that listings. business? Do you love that business? I much rather have the listings. So then, one of your key focus areas needs to be in how do I? What's driving around? How do I get more listings? Yeah. And how am I going to focus my time to get more listings so that I can mid year start to drop back on the number of buyers I take? Um. So just start thinking about those things. Any questions on that stuff? Or are you guys having trouble kind of figuring out what your focus should be? Or do you guys have a, a feeling like you kind of know? I'm sticking with the right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, short to the rubble. Pop City has been great for me so far. Yeah. Through the sphere of influence, off city, really, I got to figure out what more you know, I want to focus on. I'm not sure what that's going to be yet. The thing about these plans too is that it's not it's not like you fill it out and you're done for the year. It's a continuous work in progress. So, you know, don't feel like you have to. I'm going to watch the video. I'm going to fill it out, and then that's all I'm going to do for next year is just follow it strictly. You can look and see like if things aren't working along the way, you can modify it. It's not. You know, it doesn't have to be the be all and end all. And when I when I send the link to you, you'll be able to download a, um, a editable PDF so that you can actually do it like on your computer too. Because you might, you know, March shows up and all of a sudden you an opportunity presents itself that you didn't think was even in your realm. And all of a sudden it's like, oh man, this is gonna like Jeff all of a sudden has this opportunity. You know, that might not have been a focus before. Now it would be so. Don't feel like you have to fill it out all all at once and it's done and you can't change it. So keep it as sort of a, a working tool. Yeah, you have to start somewhere. And that's why having four key focuses allows you to be flexible. It allows you to, you know, if you if you just if Sean, if you just said, Oh, my only uh, the only thing I'm gonna focus on next year is Op City, then that's a mistake. Um, if 
you focus on say, okay, that's my buyer side of the business right now. Um, I do want to start developing some other buyer business so that if I ever decided I wanted to tell Op City, I don't want to pay you 35% anymore, then I could, I have my own source of buyer leads. But then, okay, well, I also see the, the, the powerful impact of having listings. So what, what is my marketing plan to try to find some listings? And, and it's, it's got to go deep. It's got to be, you know, all right. So listings, I'm going to learn how to do the Facebook seller ads. I'm going to commit a little bit of money each month to the Facebook seller ads. And when I get a lead, I'm going to mail out, you know, a mailer to them right away with a note card and a, and a, um, in a flyer or a, or a trifold on what I do and how I do it. And then every six weeks, they're going to get a mailer from me because I'm going to build, put them into a database and I'm going to keep mailing to them every six to eight weeks until they sell or, or, or with me or with someone else and like get that deep with it because you have to create basically a full action plan. If you don't, then you're just going to treat it like, all right, well, that's one of my legs of business and um, I'm running the ads and I'm getting leads, but, I don't really have a set follow-up plan. So when I'm have the time, I'll send out note cards. When I don't, I don't, you know, you have to really look at it. Like it's, it's a full, it's a, it's a plan. It's also in here. You'll see there's action plans. Like when I get a lead, this is what they're going to get. They're going to get from me. This is my value proposition. This is my message to them. This is how I'm going to win that business. Um, for some of you, it might be every time I get a home value lead, I'm going to do a market. And some agents have asked me if I get a home value value lead on the website, do I do a market analysis and drop it off at the house, or do I mail them a note card, or do I waste that time before they've contacted me back? They all work. It depends on what your approach wants to be. You know, if you feel like you've got the time to do that and do a market analysis with, without even knowing whether they're going to talk to you or not, sh sure, go for it that's not something I'm doing with mine, but you could do with yours. So it's not, your plan's got to work for you and it's got to be, I mean, I'll go through it with you and make sure it sounds sound, but you got to really have a, a real set plan because it's going to determine what your week looks like. You know, if you don't have any organization to it, then, you know, you don't really, you, you just kind of run around like a chicken with your head cut off more or less. <laughs> And that's why we were talking a lot about marketing plans. What is your, I, I forget what the t statistic was. It's, it's very low percentage are gonna buy on the first contact. I, it, it's less than, I, I forget what it is. It's, it's low. It's like a, co a tenth of a percent or something like that. It's super low. The wins come in the follow-up. The wins come in the, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh follow-up. That's where the real wins are going to come in. 99% of agents probably stop after the first or second attempt. So start thinking about your marketing plan and whatever you're, wherever you're going out to try to find your business and whatever leads you get is what is, that's only step one. What are steps two through seven or longer? You know, what's, how often are they going to see my name and face? How often am I going to call them? And that will determine your week. So you're not just setting up your prospecting hours and whether you do it at home or get in the office, just getting on there and be like, I don't know what I'm going to do today. I'm prospecting. Hmm, what shall I do? You know what you're going to do. You're like, all right, today is some people go as detailed and I'm, I, I, I can't personally do that, but if it works for you, it works is, uh, I know they teach us and bam, like this day of the week is my follow up to all my A clients the number one priorities. This prospecting set of hours is all my B clients. This one is my C clients, you know, so that you're, you're, you know, not working them all on the same day. You've got specific days of the week that you're following up with certain types of people, you know, like your Friday might be all your seller leads you're following up with. Monday might be all your buyers. So, so got to start thinking about it from an organized perspective. So you really don't miss anything and really are, are, are not missing any steps along the way. That was probably the biggest thing my coach harped on me about was processes. You know, whether you're a loan agent or a big team, you got to start with processes even as from the beginning. Like what are, what are my processes for every time I work with a buyer? What are my processes with every time I work with a seller? You got to have processes for lead follow-up as well. So when you get a new buyer, 
you know, what are your processes? You know, do you make sure that they're in sync and they're in MLS and that you get their address and send them a note card and um, make sure that you go over the home buying process with them or, or do you sometimes skip steps because you feel like they were going to buy either way? That's why they always say, like, even with family, make sure whatever your listing presentation is, whatever your standards are, you never skip a step with anybody you meet from a seller's perspective. I don't care whether they're family or your brother or sister. Don't take for granted your business standards just because you think you can get away with it on this one. So, make sense? Mm -hmm. Any questions on all that stuff? It's a lot, but this business is a lot. <laughs> It's a, uh, it's a grind, you know, and you got to love the grind. Bless you. The, 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 the biggest part of working in a grind is, is making sure it's, it's rewarding. And when you're working with sometimes people that are not rewarding, it can, the grind gets very difficult. And so we want to try to avoid those kind of people at all costs. Occasionally we're going to do it and we're going to suck it up for the sake of a commission check. But when you can, and you can keep enough leads coming in to say, sorry, I don't need you anymore. That's, that's what you want to be at because it, it is a grind. If you're going to be in this grind, let's try to make it worthwhile so that you can work with people that are, you know, a good client is worth way more than just the commission check you earn. A good person that you work with that's going to be friendly with you and, and if not friends with you after they close and referring you to their family and friends is is worth probably 10 times the value of the commission you earned off them. So, you know, so it's kind of, sometimes, although you're looking at that one, pay, that one paycheck, you might be spending so much time and it might be putting you in a bad mood working with a client that it's affecting your business more than you could ever know. So let's, uh, you know, try to focus on better clients and having more leads coming in so you can say no to the ones that just are a pain to work with. But. All right. So good luck with the business plans. And uh, we will go over them next week. I, uh, I want to specifically talk about next week or what your four focused areas are for your business goals, what your, what your business goal is from a, a gross commission stamp income coming in standpoint, what that re relates to as far as number of deals. I mean, you guys know what market you're working in. If you're working in a $250,000 market, your probably average commission is five to six grand, so call it 5,500. You know what I mean? Um, if your market is a little lower than that, then it might be four to five grand commission and, and work those numbers in. And then in each of those four categories, start to identify what you would need to do to hit your full income goal in every single one of those categories. So if your goal is 20 deals, how, do you, how are you going to work your sphere of influence to make sure you try to get 20 deals out of your sphere of influence? Because I can promise you, most agents, specifically in sphere, if they're not looking at their sphere as an opportunity for getting a, a good amount of business out of it, then you're probably not talking to them as often as you should be. Uh, so what is your plan going to be? Is it going to be reaching out to my top 50 every month and my the rest every month to two months? Is it gonna be making sure they all get a mailer from me? Is it gonna be making sure that every month they can see an email from me? What is gonna be your plan for following up with your sphere of influence to get 20 deals out of them? And then if it's a buyer focus, what, what are you gonna to do to uh, make sure you do 20 deals with buyers next year? If it's sour, if your next leg is sour leads, what are you gonna to do to try to uh, hit 20 sales uh, 20 listings listed and sold next year. Where are you going to get those leads from? How are you going to follow up with them? So that you can start to develop this full term, long, full year plan of actions. Um, that, that's what we really want to get to. We want to get to the point where you know in January what you got to do, what you got to do in February, what you got to do in March, what you got to do in April to hit your business goals. It never stops. No? It never stops. Nope. It stops. I, ideally, I'd like to see you guys get to. Um, I was talking this with this about uh, with an agent the other day, and uh, they were taking classes 
you know, every once in, you know, every four months to boost their business back up because the class was meant to get them, force them to get.